conviction. My mind never was renewed. My heart was never transformed. So I went straight back to the heroin or the oxy, whatever. So then I, I, I did methadone. Well, that's a joke. I'm sorry. That is a joke because I was more high. I can remember driving a rock truck in Chilean, running into mountains because I was so high off methadone. We're going to give you a drug test. Okay, I have a prescription. And this is what we're telling people to get free from drugs. So what happens is we're giving them this solution, which is not a solution at all. It's only another problem. And then when that, that solution doesn't work for them, they're back to a place of hopelessness. And they feel like they can't get out. And they're like, oh my gosh, I've done everything. I did everything they told me to do. I went to detox, but then I wasn't meant to carry my own freedom. So that got heavy. So I went straight back to the drugs. We have to tell people truth. Man, I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is the answer to this problem. I know this with everything inside of me. If we teach this to people, imagine, this ain't just for drug addicts. Imagine the weight of this statement. If we start getting this in our life, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Those who are in Christ are a new creation. Behold, all things are new. Old things do what? They pass away. Okay, if old things pass away, I will never claim to be a drug addict over my life. That's, that's going against what he says about me. Yeah, so on. why would I claim some things over my life? And then what happens? I cannot do drugs and still be bound up here. There's a lot of people sober that are miserable and they're not free up here. So the goal is not sobriety. The goal is relationship with the one who created me. Yeah. That relationship yeah, sure. with the one who created me, the byproduct of that is I won't want to do drugs. Yeah. It's really that simple. If once I get to know him and I know his nature and I know who he truly is, and it's not who... You know, my dad says that he is, but it's who I know that he is. Yeah. I can't base it on what someone else says. So when I met him, man, it was so real because it wasn't on a preconceived notion of what someone else told me it was supposed to be. It was something I actually experienced in my life, and I felt his presence for the first time. And where the, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. There is liberty. There is freedom. So freedom came into my life in that moment. Freedom came into my life. Truth came into my life. And I start reading the Bible, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is the answer. Do you understand? In Matthew 10, 1, he sends his disciples out, and this is what he tells them. I give you authority over all darkness. I give you authority. Okay, why is our life not lining up with that authority? Why are we allowing stuff still to beat us down? Do we not understand who we are? Sometimes I wonder that because when you understand who God says that you are and you understand that the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you empowers you to live your life in a way that you never knew was possible, our life should line up with that. That means this, depression has no place when the Holy Spirit dwells here. That means this, anxiety can't stay when the Holy Spirit dwells here. When we understand what we hold, our life will start lining up with what he wants it to be. There is, man, the price paid for our life. The price paid for our life. I pictured Jesus up on that cross, man. And I pictured him taking, when I even thought about having a withdrawal, I pictured him taking that for me on that cross. And the understanding that it was all taken away that day. Yes. That day. Yes. Man, it did something to me. In my heart. My heart, I was like, oh my gosh. He took this, but not only this, but everything. So that I could live my life in freedom. He took all of this. For me to live my life free. Now here's the question. Here's the question. Will I live my life free? And I'm not just asking myself. Will you live your life according to the price that he paid for it? He fasted heaven for 33 years for you. He left paradise to come here for you. For you. It's, there's so much weight to this, man. There's so much weight to understand what he did. And the price that he paid and the purpose that he placed inside of you before the foundations of the earth, are you walking it out? Think about it. Man, he placed something special inside of you. Something so significant that this world needed. He put something inside of you that was meant to change the world. Are you bold enough to step into the, that purpose? Are you bold enough to do it? Are you brave enough to say, God, I really don't know what it looks like. I don't know what's going to happen, but I trust you enough to know that you have my back. And every step I take, as long as you are right with me, I know it'll be okay. Do we have that faith? Do we say, God, I don't really know what next month looks like, but I'm willing to lay down my life and sacrifice for what you want me to do. Yeah. 
Because it's not about me. It's not about me. As much as he set me free for me, it was not just for me. What he gave me was not mine to keep. What he gave me was meant to be shared with this world. It would be selfish for me to only stay in a box and never give away. It says, freely you receive, now do what? Freely do what? Freely give. Freely you receive, now freely do what? Man, it's not about me. The world is so big and there's so much that needs to happen here. So when we can, we, when we can do this, when we can get on our knees and say, God, I don't understand everything, but I promise you, Isaiah 6, 8 says this, here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. Who would be willing to do that? Who wants, man, who wants to walk out the purpose that God placed in their life? Right now, let me see. Let me see. Like, Angel, you better raise your hand, girl. You better raise your hand. Because you're going to do it. I'm going to make sure. But there's a price to pay sometimes for that. There's a sacrifice for that. Man, I love what I do with my life. I love that I get spread free to the people. I love looking at Nicolette and thinking, you know, you see her little girl beside her, thinking two years ago, she didn't have her. That is worth it. I love looking at Quentin and thinking, man, two months ago, this dude, he didn't even know what freedom was. He was chasing something, the deception. Because see, here's what we do. I'll get a substance to fill that void inside of me. And it'll work. For about three hours. And then it's gone again. Then I need to feel it again. Do you see what that drugs are a deception of his Holy Spirit? I have figured this out. Drugs are a deception. Because here's what we do. Let me take that drug for my peace. I need that. I need peace. Let me take that drug so I don't feel this heaviness. And the whole time he's like, I'm right here waiting to give you all of that. The feeling of heroin... Listen, I have came to this conclusion. The feeling of heroin, man, it's, he tried to copy what the Holy Spirit, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit fills that void, but really fills that void. Yeah. I chased deception for 12 years of my life, man. 12 years of my life. I ran after drugs as hard as I could do <laughs> everything inside of me. They can tell you. Man, I did some crazy, dumb, retarded stuff. And, man, I did. I ran after it so hard. But I just wasn't using the gift right. You see? Because I was meant to run after something. And when I found the purpose for that, oh my gosh, when you find the purpose for that, and you understand, Nicolette, that what we're supposed to run after is Him. Yes. And when you allow Him to fill that void, man, you'll take on the world. Yeah. I did the craziest stuff ever. Chasing after drugs, probably barefooted with half a shirt on, running down the street. Running after the dope, man, I'm, I'm exaggerating. But I'm saying I went to great lengths to get it. So when we come into this and we find something real, we have to run after that just as hard. Yeah. We have to run after him with everything inside of us. Here's the thing. You have so many days on this earth. You have so many days on this earth. Let's not look back 10 years from now and say, I wish yeah. I would have did this. I wish I would have ran after what God had for me. Let's look back 10 years from now and say, man, look at that whole, that whole region of states been changed by Jesus. Look what's happened. He has showed his freedom to a place that was so dark and his light came in and shined because we as a body of people pushed him to the forefront of everything that we did. What does that look like for us? I want to live my life that way. I want to live my life by his Holy Spirit leading me. I want the Holy Spirit to be what dictates my steps every day. Because, you know, there's a clear, Galatians 5 is so awesome. Here's why. It, it gives us a, like a road map to, um, can you hand me that water, Clinton, under your foot? It gives us a road map to, yeah, water is fine. that's good. It gives us a road map to understand if we're living our life according to the spirit or to the flesh. Because it says this, the works of the flesh are these. And I'll just give a couple. Anger, outbursts of wrath, you know, uh, perversion, orgies. It, it tells you. These are the works. And it even says this, witchcraft, which we got that word from pharmakia. The Greek word pharmakia, where we get our word pharmacy, 
is what we interpret it into witchcraft in Galatians and Revelation. So, pharmakia is a work of the flesh. He tells us, he gives us clear signs that about drugs. See, because what happened back then, this is what they did. They would go to a, a, a temple and they would worship false gods. <coughs> and before they went in, the priests of these temples would give them a potion. And they would get high from the potion. So they would be under the influence of this drug while they're worshiping false gods. So they would send them home. And now, if you can look at this indication of how this works today, too. They would send them home. The problems would still be there. So the people would come back to the priests and be like, man, I don't, it's bad again. Okay, here, take this potion. Go worship the false god. Same thing again. Take this potion. Go worship the false god. Take this pill and put it above God. It's not changed, but it's going to change. And I love Galatians 5 because it tells us this, there's two things inside of you. You understand that, like, there's two, imagine it like this there's two dogs inside of you. One is your flesh, one is your spirit. I can't live my life free if I live in the flesh. Like, it's impossible. The spirit empowers me to live free. So if you have two things inside of you, two dogs, let's look, let's look at it like that, and you feed them, whichever one you feed the most is going to be the strongest. So if I'm feeding my flesh all day and I'm watching stuff on the phone, I'm on my phone I shouldn't be watching, or I'm listen, even do listen, music, it's got such a stronghold over your mind. The stuff you put inside of you, when the world presses in on you, and things get hard, and it will happen. This is life. There will be challenges. Whatever you put inside of you is what will come out. So when there's challenges and there's roadblocks and there's things you've got to deal with, what are you putting inside of you to equip you to handle those things? So then if you're, if you're feeding your spirit, if you're praying, if you're filling yourself with truth, because if I'm filled with truth, then lies won't have a place. If I fill myself with enough truth, then lies will have no place in my life. And there's things in our life, man. Listen, there's things that's been spoken over us. There's things that people have said about us that we believe. And so it's not what he says about us. And we'll take that lie and allow it to be implanted inside of our heart. And it will stay there so long, man. And, and, and it's negative things people have spoken over us. It's, it's things of, that will degrade you. Things of you will never amount to this. You will never do that. And you start believing that stuff. And then before you know it, man, you actually believe that's what your life is supposed to be. You have to fill yourself with truth because if it doesn't say it in here about me, I'm not going to believe it. Not this iPad, the, the Bible app on the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> iPad part says all kinds of stuff about me. <laughs> but you have to know what's true about yourself. And it's your job to seek after him and find out. What is true about yourself? Somebody can't tell you. I can look at Nicolette and be like, you're a daughter of God. You were created to overcome every obstacle in your life. You have inside of you. You are a new creation, Nicolette. But until she finds that out, it won't mean a lot. Mm -hmm. So you've got to search truth for yourself. You have to find out what's true. It's so good when your life can reflect truth. Here's why. It's because there's no shame. There's no guilt, there's no worry, there's no doubt, and you can live your life this way. He, he tells us this, he gives us an example. You can live your life every day filled with his joy, peace, and happiness, and everything that you face, you, you are equipped to overcome it. That is awesome, because I didn't know that for so long. Some of y'all might have known this longer than me, but I found this out, and it changed my life. So I want, I want my life to line up with this, with this truth. And I want every day, every person I come in contact with, I want to influence them and show them what true freedom looks like and what Jesus Christ really represents. I don't want to be fake, man. 
I want to be a real representation of the one who gave his life for me. I want my life to line up with what he says. He gives us a clear roadmap on how to do this. We just have to get in there and find it and follow it. And then what will happen is this, man. Your burden will be light. Your burden will be light. And you'll do things in your life you never imagined. Like you were created for greatness. Who believes that? Who honestly believes that God created you for something great? Honestly, in your heart, believes it. Who really knows that, man, what I was put on this earth to do is so significant. It's so big. I can't even imagine what it is. But I want to run after it as hard as I can with everything inside of me, man. Why would I not give it all to him? That's how I achieve those, that purpose that he put inside of me. It don't just happen. I have to run after it. So who would? Like, man, who would run after it? Who would say, God, I want to run after you with everything inside of me. I want, to, oh my gosh, I want to live out why you put me on this earth. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, that's okay. If you don't know your purpose, it's okay. Peter didn't know forever. He was crazy the whole three years. He was with Jesus doing craziness. But he found it in hanging out with Jesus. That's where he found it. Three years later, before his, his whole goal in life, before he met Jesus, was, I want to catch more fish. That's all I want to do. I want to catch more fish. After he met Jesus, and he spent three years with him, he learned his nature, knew who he was. He had a relationship with him. Give up religion and get a relationship. Yeah. And he did that, and three years later, he went on to change the world. Like, he's walking by people, and his shadows are healing I mean, <laughs> because he had a relationship with the one who created him. That's why. He had a relationship. Because it's not, man, it's not, listen, it's not head knowledge. It's not head knowledge. It's about knowing who wrote it. Because when you know who wrote it, you'll know how to take it because you'll know his nature. And it won't get twisted and perverted, but you'll know what the truth of it is. So, yeah. Alright. So yeah, I got set free on March the 1st of 2014. And we've now And now we're running after it with everything, man. Because we know that for such a time as this, he's placed us where he's placed us. I want to do stuff in Bethlehem. I don't want to just, you know, like I love this area, not only Bethlehem, Glen Daniel. I want what we're doing to have influence here too, because I know it's needed. This is my home. I want to be able to help where I live. So I want to start trying to come here more often and do things. I even had an idea back in the summer of doing a How I'm Hooked the Movement event in Bethlehem. So um, if we do that, who's in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are here. That's what, we are here. Because it's needed. It's needed. People need to know what truth is. And um, I just want to pray really quick. Nicolette and Kev, y'all can come up and and do your how great they are. Um, but I just want to pray really quick. And listen, this altar is open. If there's things in your life, as they're singing, if there's things in your life that you just feel the heaviness of, and you know that is something you need to get rid of. There's weight on your shoulder sometimes that's unnecessary. And he's just waiting to grab it from you. Like he's just waiting for you to give it to him. He don't want you to carry it. So if, if that is you, if you have things in your life, man, it's just weighing you down. His burden is light. He promises this. His burden is light. Let's not carry the heaviness. And let's find out what truth is about ourselves and allow our life to line up with why he put us here. Cool. All right, so I'm going to give it to Nicolette. If anybody does want to come up for prayer, you are more than welcome. Um, so, yeah, go ahead.